Hey, Justin here with Carolina Packers doing another episode of Brightleaf Hot Dog Reviews where we share with you where you can enjoy the best hot dogs on planet Earth, a Brightleaf hot dog. Now today we are here in Benson at the Redneck Barbecue Lab and I'm sitting here with Jerry. How's it going today? Doing well, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing great. If I'm in a place that has barbecue in its name and it smells like barbecue, I'm happy to be here. That's one of the things I always find comfort in. You find those places you like to stop at. One of the things I always used to laugh about, my grandfather would bring me up, Johnson County Ride Arounds, we'd see a sign that said, Brightly Hot Dogs Sold Here. So I like you guys' sign too. <laughs> so, uh, so tell me about this place. What is the Redneck Barbecue Lab? Well, the Redneck Barbecue Lab started out as, uh, we were a competition barbecue team and we were competing and cooking. Later on, people wanted our products. We started doing a little bit of catering out of our commercial trailer that we compete out of. And it got to the point where we needed somewhere to cook food for a catering kitchen. So we found this little attached uh, building in a garage or, or a gas station. And uh, we really intended it to be kind of a commissary for our catering operation. We had 23 little seats out front. We never thought, you know, we had a drive through window. We are like, you know what, we'll be able to do our catering during the day and at night time when people come home, they'll be able to maybe get a meal or two to take home with them. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we know, we open the door and it's turned into a lunch destination. Yeah. And yeah. we're like, oh. Since then, we just kind of took off. We've got a larger expanded dining room. And um, man, just blessed, you know. That was one of the things when we started this, we had no idea it would uh -huh. take off and do what it did. But here we are, five years, almost five years later. Five years later. As crazy as it sounds, getting bigger and bigger. So when you drive to work every day, and before you come in this building, you're just looking at it. How does that make you feel? Uh, makes me feel proud because one of the things is 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 when we pull up here in the morning time, the front of the uh, our building's lit up and it says the Redneck Barbecue Lab, and it just kind of glows. And it's one of those things, it doesn't matter how tired you are from the previous day um, or, or how hard you work or something, you get here and you get that little energy because you see that sign and it's glowing. And it's kind of like the same thing as when folks pull up to our restaurant. A lot of times they just pull up to get gas and they pull up and they don't even recognize our restaurant, but it's the smell. It's our barbecue smokers going and they'll be smelling and their nose leads them to the sign. Mm -hmm. They see the sign, they see people indoors, of course they come in. All right, so when you first come to the Redneck Barbecue Lab, you see the atomic symbol in their logo. What is all that about? That's a good question. We get, we get asked that all the time because like I said, we started out as a competition barbecue team. And the way that it started out is we started building our homemade, these homemade smokers. We did them out of these old oil drums, basically. We cleaned them out, we cleaned them out. We, and we actually, in the competition, we used new 55-gallon uh, drums, just as a caveat here. But we built these smokers and we were using science to build them. We were using convection, you know, heat rises, pulling in coal. We used all these principles, these physics principles and stuff, and used this science to build this redneck convection oven. I actually trademarked the name and called it a redneck convection oven, the way that these things worked. And they worked really cool, but people would look at it and they laugh about it. So look at those rednecks. And mm -hmm. then we explained it to them, like, wow, there's a lot of science behind that. So we used that name redneck scientific. So hence, and our competition team, we use the redneck periodic chart of elements. And uh, we have that on some of our vehicles you'll see. And like for P, the element P, um, which is potassium, it's actually a real potassium, but on ours it's pork and it's got the, the weights and stuff like that. Okay. But the atomic symbol that we used here, we just kind of used that because we were using the science and the elements. And, and in our cooking today, um, even when we mix up our, our cornbread mix, we weigh everything. Our water, we don't just say a couple cups, we measure it out to the grams and stuff like that. So we do use a lot of science when it comes to our cooking here at the lab, and hence that's where all that came from. So when it comes to competition barbecue, you mentioned that it all comes down to science. Yep. I know you can't share everything, but can you share one or two tips for the pit masters watching this? Yeah, I always tell people is that um, you're never, and this is the competition barbecue mm -hmm. thing, and, and I'm really blunt with people, and I want everybody to compete. I especially want kids to compete. Nobody I wants to win. That's it. I, that's <laughs> it. Everybody that knows me knows when I compete, I compete to win. I don't want to be first place in ribs, chicken, or brisket. I don't want to hear our name just called, I want to win. That's my whole mindset. I'm there to win, and that's my business. I'm there to win. But with that being said, I very encourage people, we got the kids in the backyards to come out of these competitions and compete. But I always started out, it's, it's, it's what I call kind of blunt force trauma. It's the way my father would always talk to me. It's like, 
son, and I can hear him say it, son, as successful as you think you're going to be in life at something, you're really not. He says, but what the, you need to do is just keep trying harder to get better and better. Competition barbecue is the same thing. You think you have the best product. You think you have the best thing. And a lot of times when you go and compete, you find out maybe you don't. Or maybe you need to tweak something. Or maybe it is, you know. And, and that's the, the lure, of that, that drive that kind of gets you into the competition barbecue and compete. So my thing is, is when you go to compete, go into expectation is, is that on any given day, anybody can win. But your percentages are pretty lower than most folks who compete you know, more than you do and stuff. So it's just go into expectation to put the best product that you can, be prepared and, and do what you can, but don't set the bar super high on expectation of success. It takes time, it takes patience, and Lord knows. I, a lot of people say, you're a professional, Jerry, and um, I'm like, yeah, you know why I'm a professional? It's because I have made more mistakes in life than most people have even tried. And that's the only thing that, that separates like a backyard cook from a professional cook mm -hmm. is the amount of mistakes we make. Mm -hmm. So that's what I always tell people. Just don't be afraid to try. Yeah. But it's just go ahead and realize that success is hard. Success is earned and, and success is something is is you have to work at it to keep it. So you mentioned that hard work comes into play when winning competitions and yeah. always striving to get better. Have you your barbecue is really good. Have are you always trying to improve that, try new recipes or have you found that magic that everyone just loves every single day we try something new every yeah. single day we are tweaking every single day we're our biggest critic in here i eat so much barbecue and sides i mean a piece of cornbread everything i eat i try 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 and there's very few things in here that i don't just try every day that i know that the product is good i know when we start out i know where my beef is sourced out of iowa i know where our pork comes from what farms our turkey here comes from one farm in South Carolina. Our chicken comes from one place, Gainesville, Georgia. You know, I know where it comes from and our products are good. And it's just like the hot dogs you guys serve. I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. A lot of what I have to worry about is consistency in our execution. Mm -hmm. So when I'm checking stuff and I'm making sure things are good, a lot of it is really on our end, our consistency, yeah. consistency and execution. We always start out here, the products that we serve, the raw products, they're the best products we can find, they're the products we believe in, and they're the products we're proud to say this is what we serve. And this is, you know, and here it is. That's our thing. Just like these hot dogs, it's like, here it is. Come try them. That's our thing. It's like, come try them. If you love them, it's great. We like to hear you love them. If you find something that's hot dog, maybe it's like my mom. My mom's going to tell you this hot dog chili is my mom's recipe, but she'll say, Jerry, it's a little hot. It's a little too hot for me. Yeah. And it's, I tweaked it a little bit, Mom, and you know what it is. I, I like Texas Pete. Texas Pete being another North Carolina yeah. product, we yeah. have some Texas Pete okay. in our hot dog, you know? Yeah. So that's one of the things I love hearing about, about the products and stuff here. But um, that's every day, like I said, we, we try to get better. We try to do something a little bit better than we did the day before. So you mentioned this chili's homemade. Yeah. Is, is your mom like a barbecue scientist too? No, nah, my mom is actually, she's not a scientist. She is Dr. Stevenson. She okay. is she is Dr. Stevenson, yeah. but she's not a scientist. But my mom is, is the best cook in the world. I mean, like every other mom in the world, they're the best cook in the world. And her hot dog chili, I have the same ingredients. I know what she uses, everything, mm -hmm. and hers is still better than mine. Oof. It's hard to beat mom. And I cast iron yeah. skillet and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, and, and she's my biggest critic. I think when I when we first started the lab and stuff uh -huh. here, she's my biggest critic. But I think she's got to a point now where she's happy because, like us, if everybody else is happy, we're happy. Yeah. So does she enter competitions too with her chili, or does she just do it at home and like here you go? No, I, I, I think my mom. She she's done some stuff where she uh -huh. she's like always like she's telling me she's got a pulled pork recipe she wants uh -huh. to give me. I'm like mom, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm good, you know. Yeah. And uh, she's the inspiration behind her and my sister. My sister Roxanne Manley is actually my partner okay. in the in the barbecue competition scene. And my sister, uh, we are world champions in wow. pork and chicken. You have Johnson County, North Carolina. We wow. are the current world champions. Wow. Jack Daniels World Invitational. I mean, it's the world. It's the best in the world. So you have where, to win to where get can in. people go to watch these things or find out about these competitions? A lot of them are on. Uh, we compete on the KCBS trails, the Kansas City Barbecue Society trail, okay. and you can go. You can go online to see where we're at. A lot of times online, we'll say where we're at, where we're going. We kind of try to take you. It's like 
y'all don't know this, Brightleaf doesn't know this, but these have been to the Kansas City Motor Speedway and oh, served wow. on a Thursday afternoon prior to us at the uh, competing at the World Series of Barbecue, wow. you know. And Thanks there's for people. The plug. Yeah, man. I, that's what I'm saying is, it's, it's funny because people from New Zealand have eaten Brightleaf hot dogs. Oh they, wow! They might not. They might not know where North Carolina yeah, is, yeah. but they they're like, hey, I know Brightleaf hot yeah. dog, North Carolina, yeah. you know. And and that's that's kind of the thing we've done along the way. And and, and getting back to my mom, my yeah, mom and yeah. my sister. Yeah, my mom's made me and my sister be the competition cooks, the world champion. My sister's a world champion in side dishes. I mean, she's won world championships and dessert you know i mean it's just and that came from my mom yeah. i mean that's that's your mom's knowledge your mom's love right. passing the stuff down um and, and we try to make mom proud with what we did that's the best way to say it all right well i'm ready to try these hot dogs <laughs> um how do you guys cook these here the way that we cook these is 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 we boil them um there's several different ways that i like them i'll tell you my best way and and this comes from um a, a, a fella here um, it was actually a couple of brothers here, Dean and Jeff Barber here, right here in uh, Four Oaks area, right here in Benson. Um, I would eat the Bright Leaf hot dog and boil, and I, it's fine, that's the way I like it. But they showed me a new way, and I wish we could do it here at the lab, and I'll share this as one of my tricks at home, but we would go to the fish fry, and that was our hors d'oeuvres. They would fry a Bright Leaf hot dog, and there ain't nothing better in this world. Yeah. We do not have a fryer here at the lab. We don't have a microwave oven. We don't freeze the food. We cook it fresh. We run out, and if we don't, it goes to wow, the food. Wow, so all your food is fresh. Yeah. And if you don't use it, you donate it. Yeah, it goes okay. out. It goes out the next morning. It's, it's packaged, cooled down. That's cooled awesome. down properly, yeah. packaged. You send it out. and. We've got somebody in the community that kind of shares it with people who need it. Yeah, that's but um, it, it, if I had a fryer here, we would fry these hot dogs. They're, 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 that's just a kind of a pro tip. It's another little extra, uh -huh. uh, extra little step in getting these hot dogs. Uh -huh. I would fry these, but we do boil these here at the lab. I mean, there's just something. It, it takes it to the next level. But I think these, these we, we do a very good job with. I mean, we use your product. We use Martin's rolls here. I believe in that potato bread. I love that potato bread. The mm -hmm. split rolls I had with you Saturday were awesome. I love those. Um, my mom's chili. That's my mom's homemade chili on there. I'm proud of that. I'd put that chili up against anybody in the nation, not just this county or the wow. state. I would okay. put up against I'm proud of my mom's chili. I really yeah. am. And I realize we all have our opinions yeah, about yeah. the best. You know, here we are in North Carolina. We talk college basketball. Yeah. We're beating on yeah. our chest, our team. And yeah. I'm not way about my mom's chili. But we use that. And, um, you know, the way I like mine is just simple mustard, onions, and chili. I, I, the only way I don't like it is we catch up on it. But Yeah, so we're going to eat these things now because he pretty much sold me off. <laughs> and that is our homemade chili on there. But this is the okay. way I like them. I mean, yeah. I just, like I said, real simple. Mm -hmm. Um, this is one of my go-tos in here, collards, collards and hot dogs. I guess I guess there's a lot of people now going, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. But I, I, I live on bright leaf hot dogs and collard drinks. There's nothing wrong with that. No. Give me a try. Tell me what you think. I'm one of the doctors. Like, that's a really good hot dog. I love that chili. It's you really, know. Really good. You guys, the hot dog that you guys make is just consistent. Every single time, the flavoring on it, the texture on it, everything that you do with it, it it's, it's the same way. And that's why I said, a lot of the products that we source and we use here, I don't worry about. I know where these hot dogs are made. They're mm -hmm. made down the road, mm -hmm. Johnson County, North Carolina. And every time I eat one, mm -hmm. it tastes the same. And um, you can tell how fresh everything is here. <laughs> That, that's that, that's yeah. one of the things I think you and I were sharing about. We sell more and more hot dogs here each week. It keeps going up and up. But when we run out, boy, it's like, man, we got to go get them. And, and thank goodness you guys are like in our local food yeah. line because on a Saturday afternoon when we run out of hot dogs and you guys aren't open, we can't go get them, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, no, head to food line. Let's go to food <laughs> line. Got to get them hot dogs because you got no idea. People drive for like, hours to come eat our barbecue. But we have people that drive here to eat these hot dogs, you know? Mm -hmm. And and the way I know that is, is is they'll tell us they come here to eat these hot dogs. But yep. yeah. So uh, so how can people order your barbecue and your hot dogs? What is the best way that you can get the stuff you guys provide? Realistically, I I tell people it's like come to the barbecue lab. Okay. I mean we have food trucks that go out and everything. 
And the food is our food on the, on, on the trucks, just like we serve here. But at the barbecue lab, it's kind of an experience. You get to come here and our store, it's um, decorated. It's all about Johnson County and it's all about barbecue. You see the pictures on the walls. My great grandfather's hanging over the walls. My mother's right behind you. My father's on here. My sister, some of our awards. The story of barbecue where it starts out, some paintings that were done by Sean Manley and stuff that are in here. I always say come here and eat because it's a special experience that a lot of people enjoy. They come here, they, they, they get a sense of who we are about what we are. Not only our food, but the people up on our walls and what we stand for. And like I said, on our hats, on my trailer, on everything we do is Johnson County, North Carolina. Like I said, we always encourage people to come in, try the food. You know, we want you to eat our food, but also to experience uh, the full experience of our area. And like I said, products that we use, the Atkinson Mill flour, you know, our cornbread mix, mm -hmm. bright leaf hot dogs, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. cheer wine, you know, we're proud of cheer wine, Texas Peak, North Carolina, come here, try the food, stay for the experience, and of course, let us know what we can do better. If you didn't like something, I, I like hearing, my staff loves hearing that we're doing our job. We really do, that the food was good, mm -hmm. you enjoyed your stay, but man, we absolutely, positively love it when you guys say, hey, I wish you could do something better. So. All right, well, thanks for having me today, Jerry. No problem. We enjoyed having you guys in here, and uh, you're in here every day, by the way, yeah. but it's good having you. <laughs> thanks. All right, guys, that's another episode of Bright Leaf Hot Dog Reviews. See you.